Well, I'll echo Tom's uh, thanks for everybody coming. And I know it's short notice. And, and uh, I met with Coach this morning at 9 o'clock, uh, told him. And we'd been, t we'd been meeting regularly over the past several weeks, told him that uh, I was going to go a different direction with the program. Uh, met with the team shortly thereafter and informed them. And, uh, and here we are today. Uh, you know, I made a statement about five, six weeks ago of, of support for the program, support for the coach, and I thought it was really important at that time. You know, a lot of things happen when the season, when you struggle in a, in a season. A lot of people on the outside start trying to get to your kids, uh, convince them they need to go somewhere else. Uh, uh, a lot of the kids that are, are, are uh, you're trying to recruit, there's people telling, telling them in their, in their, don't go there, don't go there. And, and really, it was it was uh, uh, twofold in mind. One to address that, to take some of the pressure off, and and, and give everybody a chance, and uh, without that pressure, to come down the stretch and see what we could do. Uh, you know, from that point on, you know, it was a continuous evaluation of the program, and, and it came down to at the end, uh, they're just we just weren't making the progress we needed to make. And uh, you know, the question is, what do we want Tulane to be? And uh, maybe not what it has been in the past, but what are our aspirations and goals? And I've said from the very beginning when I got here, I want to win in everything. And, and when I say win, I don't just mean competitively. I mean academically. I mean socially. I mean in, in every way I want to be successful. And, uh, you know, we have a scoreboard. And uh, uh, very obviously, you know, we're, we're a long way away from that in men's basketball right now. So it's time to make a leadership change. Uh, I love Mike to death. He, he did so much for this program that I don't think will ever be noticed um, because we only look at the win-loss records. He inherited a team GPA of 199 and turned it into 315. Uh, you know, that's important to Tulane. He has great kids who represent the university on and off the floor tremendously. You know, the one thing all season, you know, they played hard. And I, I told the guys when I met with them, you know, it's really easy when things are going the way they went to quit. Uh, to to give up, and the last thing and the thing that they never did was to quit or give up. They played a, as hard the last minute of the season as they did the first, and I'm very proud of them. But that also goes back to Mike's leadership and, and the commitment inside the program. Uh, it's time to start a search, and uh, uh, you know, like every AD in the country, I do have my list in the pocket, and uh, uh, I've already had my first few calls this morning, and. Uh, uh, we will not use a search firm. We'll uh, handle that uh, inside the department, and hopefully, you know, uh, the next couple of weeks uh, make good progress. And really, the next you'll hear about uh, hear about the search from me is when we have a coach to announce. So, with that said, uh, I guess I'll open it up to questions. If, if you don't feel progress is being made, if you're not looking forward and anxious about what lies ahead, then you have to ask yourself, why aren't you? And, and you know, and I got to the point, uh, I know we had some injuries, and, and uh, I know we, we struggled in certain areas. Were we going to be able to bounce back from that? Is the program going to be better off a year from now if we stand pat or if we make a change? Is it going to be better off two years from now? And, you know, I don't know if there was a day that that, I, that, that switch kicked, but it, it was really obvious over the course of the last few weeks that uh, we weren't in a position to get better uh, in the next year. We weren't in a position to get better the next two years based on what I saw right now. No, you know, I, I do know a lot more about the program and a lot more about the league and what it takes to compete in this league. Uh, you know, that said, uh, maybe this, uh, this won't come across right, but Mike was the right hire at the time. Uh, he came in with a skill set. He came in with an experience that, that, frankly, we needed to light a fire under the program. We needed to become credible again. And, and uh, you know, this is... This is a great basketball league. I told President Fitz during my interview that it would be harder for basketball to turn here than football. And I reminded him of that a couple of weeks ago, and he said, oh, I didn't believe you at the time. But, you know, we have six or seven schools in this league who, who are basketball-first schools. 
who have had great traditional historical success, made great investments, and we're trying to catch them. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, Mike was the right guy at the right time. Uh, as I said, he got a lot of things done. I think the program is, is structurally stable. The underneath part that maybe you know, doesn't show on the scoreboard, I, I feel good about that part of it. And if you don't feel good about that part, you really don't have a, cho a, a chance to get going on the scoreboard. Uh, but I do understand you know, from a recruiting standpoint, from a, uh, uh, the guys on the floor, we need to, to up our level of recruiting. And that will obviously be a primary focus of where I turn for the next head coach. When, uh, uh, we have to catch up in talent. We've got a good young core, uh, and it is a young core, but we need more of them, and we need to surround them in all five positions and make sure we have talent across the board. As, as you, you see the teams that come in here and play, and then I, you see you know, up in the conference tournament, uh, you know, we shot 62% most of the first half against Memphis, and we trailed most of the half, and, and it was athleticism that was the difference. And so we need to get more athletic uh, as well in our roster. So. Uh, I, I think we'll be in a good position. We'll have a good grasp on what we need going forward. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I would say you know, it's easy to say it doesn't matter, but whenever you terminate a coach, almost invariably you hire the opposite. Uh, and, and I'm not saying we're hiring the opposite, but my focus is going to be on sitting college head coaches, uh, those who have been sitting college head coaches. And I'm sure there'll be a, a couple of elite level assistants in there as well. But uh, if I have 20 guys in mind, uh, 15 of them are going to be coaching the next week in the, in the NCAA tournament in one form or another. Um, and the rest will have coached in the NCAA tournament. So I, I think that's, that's my focus to start. You just never know, though, these searches. You think you might be going in a straight line, and all of a sudden there's a turn. But I think that's, a, that's about as clear as I can be with where my focus is going forward. What was that Mike's You know, uh, I, I think Mike, Mike believes the program was, going in a, uh, was in better shape than I believe it's in from a ability to compete next year and going forward. Uh, you know, I, Mike and I have had a great relationship together. Uh, and, you know, the... The hardest part of all this is the personal part because he's a good man and he did everything right and we didn't win. But, you know, who do you want to be? Who, who do we want Tulane to be? And, you know, I want to be a good man and I want to do everything right and I want to win. And that's, you know, I think Mike understands that. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure he'll have some comment later today. Uh, you know, the, the characterization in the release is I told him I was going to go a different direction. I just felt we needed to. You know, there were 800 transfers last year, which means about 2.5 per team. So status quo, you expect changes. As I told the guys this morning, and, and this I've told to every team that I've ever met with when a new coach is coming in, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to be emotional and get impatient. Give it a couple of weeks, let the new coach come in, and, and uh, see if you like the song the new coach sings. You know, it's, it's re-recruitment all over again. Anytime a new coach comes into a program, they have to re-recruit the guys that are in the program, sell them on their vision for the program the same way they may sell tomorrow's freshman or incoming freshman on the, a vision for the program. Uh, you know, that said, I told him, I, I, I don't want anybody to leave. Uh, you know, but at the same time, what's most important to me is they're happy and they feel like they have a chance to be successful. You know, my, my job, my only job as an AD really is to empower other people's success. And I told them, I want to empower their success. Hopefully that's here. Uh, but give the next coach a chance and, and uh, we'll see where we go from there. You know, as, as I've talked to you know, some people around the country, as some of the agents, and, and uh, uh, you know, in the last week, really, you know, feeling out what a pool might look like, who's out there. There's a different level of interest. 
in in the position now than there was before. And I'll tell you, there's a couple of things. One, I think the the institutional commitment to successful athletics is is now apparent. Uh, it was it was spoken and speculated when I walked in the door, but I think you know under the board's leadership, under President Fitz's leadership. Uh, I think there's a different impression out there of, of whether Tulane is actually committed to success in athletics. And uh, you know, my message was the same as it, uh, three years ago as it is today, that we're committed every bit as much to athletic success as we are to academic success. Tulane is a hot university right now. There's a lot of good things going on, and athletics is one of the things that we expect to be good. I will also tell you, football winning a bowl game, believe it or not, has impact on this search because it proves that you can do it here. And that was one of the things that was missing. Now, it's been a while since we've had that success in basketball. But I've heard over and over again the last few weeks, the fact that Tulane can do it in football in this league, they know it can be done in basketball. And that was an unanswered question three years ago. I think that's exactly right. I've got a pretty good sense of direction here, a pretty good sense of, of who fits what I think the needs are, and uh, you know, pretty good uh, set of relationships around the country with, with the, what I would consider the, the core group of, of agents and representatives of those coaches that, that uh, uh, you know, it, as most everybody knows, Brett Just, who played here, is one of the top college coach agents in the country. And, and he understands, you know, I'm not, you know, I just throw that out, but there, there are people that are connected to Tulane that, that have an interest in Tulane as well. How quickly would you like Quickly, but not fast. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people playing this weekend. I, I refuse to talk to anybody who's playing until they're done playing. It's not fair to their kids. Uh, same thing, you know, if, if I was in that position, I wouldn't want somebody talking to my coaches uh, while we were still in the tournament. So I will wait for everybody who's, who's in the tournament to be done in the tournament. That means it could last a while. It means there could be some people I could start talking to this weekend. There will be people I can start talking to on Monday that are not in this tournament. So uh, uh, certainly I would like to have it done by the Final Four, but there may be circumstances that prevent that. Well, I would say this. I think there are five criteria for a coach to be successful here in basketball. One, first and foremost, character and integrity. And given what's going on in the college basketball world right now, I've got to do a deep dive on anybody I talk to uh, just to make sure that that first criteria is met. Because without the first criteria, the next ones don't matter. You have to be able to recruit. You have to be able to develop players. Uh, this is a four-year school. You know, uh, this is not a one-and-done place, and so you've got to have the ability to recruit kids that are going to be here four years and, and, and uh, advance their skill set along the way. We, uh, we have to have somebody that can X and O with some pretty good coaches. They're great coaches in this league, and you've got to stand across from Mick Cronin and Kelvin Sampson, and you've got to be able to match wits with them in the last minute of a tied game. That is a criteria. And I think the other criteria that sometimes gets lost is the relationship with the guys. And I've heard from, from the players, you know, I, I, uh, today in the meeting, you know, they say they're still kids. And, you know, basketball is a part-time gig for them as much as we want to make it more than that. And if a coach doesn't realize that, accept that, appreciate it, and, and engage the kids as college students, uh, it won't work. So I've got to have that. Uh, you know, basketball seemingly is a sport that, you know, you could get a couple of transfers, a couple of recruits, and, and boom, things could go quickly in the other direction, uh, maybe more so than football. Uh, you know, uh, but it, 
does take time to get kids in the cycle. And it's hard when, again, go back to the 800 transfers. It's hard when two and a half kids per school transfer every year to maintain that continuity. Uh, I yeah. <laughs> No, no. Uh, you know, as uh, obviously I engaged the, the president and the board early in my thought process that this may become an eventuality. Uh, you know, I've, uh, I've tried to weigh it. You know, it's, it's not a decision to be taken lightly because you know, the other part of it there, you know, fire the guy, fire the guy, you know, is, is the fan base. You know, two of our coaches have families, they have kids. Uh, you know, Mike is a is a bastion in basketball history. Uh, you know, so there are a lot of things it, 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 you have to approach it cautiously and not react emotionally. Uh, and you have to be doggone sure that that you're making the right decision. Um, you know, if there's doubt in your mind, you know, normally doubt in your mind says, "Let's stand pat and see how things play out." And uh, you know, I, I got to that over the last. Uh, the last few days, uh, uh, for sure. Uh, but you know, I, I obviously had engagement from university administration from the board in advance of that. Should I get to that conclusion? But it was made very clear to me that this is your decision as the athletic director, and we'll support that decision.